please welcome the Chief Security Officer for Lion Corporation, Takeshi Nakayama. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, that was a short video clip of uh, a line service, a uh, uh, mobile messenger service. Um, I'm the CISO of uh, Line Corporation, Takeshi Nakayama. Welcome to the Line Intertrust Security Summit of November 2017. I feel very privileged to be here with so many people gathering and joining with us today. I'd like to express uh, my heartfelt thanks to all the participants, VIP speakers, panelists, and also the InterTrust team for organizing this event here in San Francisco. Um, this is a short, uh, second joint effort by Lion and InterTrust to hold the security summit. We have an exceptional list of speakers and panelists today. Um, especially today, uh, Line has invited B three VIP speakers in, uh, in this summit. Um, Mr. Wo, Wo Kuei from Taiwan, a former board of director of the ICAM. President Li Zikwon from Taiwan, a former economy minister of Taiwan government. Dr. Idai Norman, a director of the Columbia Institute for Telecom Information a research center. I think this is a very rare opportunity and I'm very excited to be here too. In today's summit, we like to focus on trust and trustability, balancing access and openness with security and privacy. I wish to use my time to talk about Line and share some of our key challenges relevant to today's theme. Closing the distance. This is our mission. To talk about lying, I have to begin with our mission and how we started. Lying was born about three months after the massive earthquake that hit Japan in March 2011. The earthquake caused a massive tsunami some 70 foot high led to a nuclear meltdown in Fukushima, killed some 20,000 and also displaced hundreds and thousands more. Large parts of the phone system in Japan were also destroyed. Many people were unable to call their families, friends, loved ones to make sure they're okay. Line Messenger was our solution to help people to reach their friends' family in the events of devastating crisis like the one we had in Japan. We created an alternative way for friends, family, and loved ones to be able to connect with each other in those times when it is most important. Now it's about connecting people with people with information and with services. Throughout our history, there have been many tools to, to for connecting uh, people with people. The history of technology in many ways, the history of our attempts to connect with each other. From writing letters and the modern postal system to telegraphy, telephones, faxes, emails, and so on. These are all communication tools for connecting people with people. Connecting is, I may say, one of humanity's core desires. If we are happy or having fun, we want to share it with our friends, families. Our loved ones were in an accident. We want to make sure we know they're okay. With the background of how Line started, I wish to give you a brief summary of where we are now. Line is now a communication platform. We have over 200 million users, monthly active users around the world. Line started as a mobile messenger. 
application and then expand it to become a mobile communication platform. And as we continue to grow, our aim is to develop into nothing less than a complete smart portal ecosystem used around the world. When launched in June 2011, Line was a simple mobile messenger application. Since then, we have added a variety of useful communication tools, including Line chatbots, voice calls, group chats, and stickers. Line was the first messenger application to provide stickers, a visual way for users to express their emotions more fully than just text. We create stickers and provide them to users and also provide a place for users to create their own stickers and sell them to other users. Businesses, they can also create and give out stickers to promote their products and services. We provide line services globally, but our focus has been on Japan and uh, Southeast Asia, home to the fastest growing middle class population in the world. In Japan, we are particularly strong where more than 50% of the total population uses LINE. LINE is a free messenger application, but we generate revenue from a variety of communication tools like stickers, phone, as well as mobile, uh, games and advertisement and more. Because of this, our revenues have kept growing since our launch reaching 140 billion yen in 2016, up 16% from the previous year. Over our six years, LINE has become a mobile communication platform to help people to, co to connect and close the distance. We provide not just the messenger service, but also other services. These services include news, manga, uh, music, video streaming, food delivery, uh, taxi, and payment settlements. For example, line users can listen and share their favorite music with a family member using line music. They can split a lunch bill with friends using Line Pay. They can purchase and send a gift to their loved ones using Line Gift. In addition, Line's evolution as a communication platform goes beyond just individuals, but also extends to services and businesses. Many companies using the LINE platform to close the distance between them and their customers. Hearing and LINE's collaboration, Tappiness, uses LINE platform so that consumers can purchase products from the vending machines and settle payments using LINE. Also, Airdo, airline, lets customers book a flight uh, receive flight information, and get on their flight using LINE. Yamato Transport, the largest delivery company in Japan, uses LINE platform to let their customers know of deliveries and to confirm and reschedule the delivery time. We, we are also very active in the area of internet-based AI systems or virtual assistants. Our AI service is called Clover. With our Clover-powered AI speakers, Clover can listen to voice commands, play music, send messages, provide information about the weather, and control the TV, and more. Because of this, we think Clover is also in line with the mission, closing the distance, and the further closes the distance, 
between people, information, the service. Now, in today's digital era, there are various security and privacy risks in the business environment where we operate. Outline. We manage these risks with three controls, process, technology, and compliance. Now I should just share uh, some of the key challenges in this area that I think relevant to this theme, today's theme. With over 200 million users connecting, LINE has developed into an infrastructure, let me say a lifeline. In Japan, like I said, more than a half of the population uses LINE to connect, to communicate, to share, to collaborate. Many people depend on our infrastructure to connect with people, information, and services. Thus, our business continuity is essential. And we have the responsibility to sustain our business and service no matter what. As such, if we have a security issue, it has the potential to become more than just a business problem. It can be a societal problem. As an infrastructure, our security and the privacy levels need to meet the standards of various stakeholders, not just our own. However, with so many stakeholders, with various backgrounds, there are many different ideas of what level of privacy protection should be required. LINE should be user-friendly and provide strong protection, but increased security level may sacrifice ease of use, which may not be acceptable to some users, many users. We may have users con take control with many security options, However, it may not be safe for users, some users, to make complex decisions without sufficient technical background. We need to carefully listen to our stakeholders, users, business partners, industries, regulators, experts, communities, and always need to be up to date with the cutting edge of technology so that we can strike the right balance. Now, the central aim of LINE is to help fulfill the core human desire that is connection of closing the distance. At the same time, we have grown as community platform, communication platform, and the issue of security, privacy, and balancing access and openness have also grown ever more important. I hope that this is brief, but um, now you, have, um, you know a bit more about LINE and um, our story and challenge uh, are useful to you guys to some extent. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would like to um, um, introduce to, uh, the next speaker, uh, Tal Shamum, uh, the CEO of a business partner uh, of in InterTrust Technologies. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Nakayama-san, for a very nice introduction. I'd, I'd like to start by welcoming everybody who's here. Um, I'm probably going to be the briefest I've ever been since we had to start a little late because of traffic, but I'd like to welcome you all. I'd like to thank the line and the InterTrust marketing teams for pulling this event together. It's fantastic. I understand that San Francisco will be turning the sun on during the course of the day, so things will get warmer. Um, this conference started um, in a very serendipitous way about a year ago. Uh, Line is a business partner of InterTrust. We help protect uh, the messaging apps that they deploy, and we have an ongoing research and development partnership with them where we're trying to push the envelope in security and rights management technologies around the world. Um, and we got to talking about the best way to sort of bring the issues that face companies like Line and companies like InterTrust um, every day as we try to retrofit the internet 
to be more secure. The internet was never designed to be secure inherently because uh, it was designed by the military for military purposes and the tools they had at their disposal to secure the internet are not usually available to the consumer and uh, enterprise worlds. Um, more than ever, the technologies we've been developing for the last 25 years are at the forefront. Uh, they're finding applications across industries, whether uh, it's securing consumer data, whether it's uh, securing and managing content, or whether it's managing and securing big data that comes from industrial IoT, the time is now to make sure that every bit traveling around the internet is protected and managed in a manner that's consistent with its owner. The thesis of this meeting today was to get up one level about the, above the plumbing. Rather than focus on the nitty gritty of security and rights management and operating systems and devices, we decided to do that, but also pull together speakers and experts from areas in economics, sociology, public policy, even biology, biological data, politics, to discuss in a 360 degree fashion all of the different issues that face individuals as they touch, feel, and use the internet and inter internet connected devices.